was asked probably about two dozen times in the last couple of weeks, three weeks to speak on the subject. And I said, I wasn't going to until we found her. Uh, and that's because I knew what was happening. You, I think you touched on it. Um, the family are very upset with the way the media have handled it. But I think what they mean by that is the social media, because social media is completely out of control and has been over the last three weeks with the, um, um, what do you call them? Uh, amateur sleuths, conspiracy theorists, uh, brag of a Christie, somebody called them. You know, they, they've literally uh, been milking this terrible, terrible family tragedy uh, with all sorts of things. Some of them are massively defamatory. If I was a lawyer for the family, I would be finding these people and suing them, suing them till they had not enough, not enough money mm. for a phone, never mind access to a computer. And, uh, and that really has been quite shameful. Um, as you said a moment ago, there are questions for the police. Uh, why didn't they put a dispersal zone in place until the second week had passed? Uh, why did they allow people to walk up and down the river and take photographs and videos? Why did they release that information about her alleged vulnerabilities? Uh, because it didn't do anything. I mean, it wasn't going to help us identify her, find her, or help no. them find her. So there are all sorts of issues, I'm afraid, uh, that need to be um, investigated. And they will be. And I think they will be. The, um, the Home Secretary joined in that criticism today. It's only fair for me to point out, I think, that the family statement from the, the Nicola Bullies family, they singled out the main broadcasters as well as the print media, not simply social media. However, let, let me to return to the, 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 the subject on the table on this year, which is law mm. enforcement, uh, crime and, and punishment, or crime and lack of punishment. When you look at the clear-up rates for burglary, the appalling uh, clear-up rates for the crime of rape, for fraud, and we could go on and on and on. Is our system simply not fit for purpose? It's broken. Uh, I've said, I've written about it, I've spoken about it. Um, it is utterly broken. And this is, uh, you know, for people, for the government, for example, to say that this is post-COVID. No, it was broken before COVID and COVID just made it worse. Um, you know, the, the backlogs in the Crown Court you haven't touched upon is uh, more than 60,000 cases. Uh, if you are a victim of a serious crime today and you get luckily, the if suspect is identified and, and luckily charged, it may be a couple of years before that com case comes to trial. Uh, you mentioned uh, clear-up rates. Well, you know, we've heard the figure, you heard the figure time and time again about 21,000 police officers being um, leaving the service over the last decade and being replaced by 20,000. Let me make this very clear to your listeners. 21,000 police officers is more than half a million years of policing experience lost, just like that, replaced by 20,000 officers with next to zero uh, experience each. Uh, it'll take a decade or more for them to get up to the same level of experience that we've lost. Mm. Uh, and so you've got a perfect storm. You've got a system that uh, has massive delays in it, uh, ill-resourced. Uh, you've got uh, lack of experience across policing, probation, you name it, all sectors. Uh, yeah. People just don't have confidence in it. Uh, you then have the terrible saga of uh, the murder of Sarah Everard and, and what David Carrick, the officer, did. So people just don't know who to trust. Uh, something that's already been picked up in relation to the Lancashire Police saga. You know, did they believe what Lancashire Police were saying because of what they think about policing more generally? It is as broken as I remember it, and I remember it being pretty broken uh, two decades ago. That's so, a deeply um, depressing analysis. And that's a really strong point that replacing experienced officers with new recruits, that is not a like for like substitution, Kate. And is there, I suppose the question that people will have listening to you is where exactly did this go wrong? Is this, as some people suggest, years and years of underinvestment by a Conservative government that doesn't believe it was it was valuable enough to invest in the court system and policing? Or is it something bigger here that's changed? Uh, I, well, the biggest uh, problem has been austerity. I mean, I remember I was chief prosecutor in 2010 when uh, the Prime Minister Cameron was uh, elected. And the very first thing I had to do was in two years, I had to reduce my budget by 25%. And what I had to do in order to make that happen was to get rid of my most experienced staff because they were my most expensive staff. Uh, and that was just me as a little prosecutor in the northwest of England. So add that up across the city, across the country, add that up in terms of policing, add that up in terms of probation, court service, judges, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you lost tens of thousands of years of experience just like that. And uh, again, when I was a uh, chief in London in between uh, in the in the two thousand that decade, we were doing really well uh, comparatively. Our conviction rates were high. Uh, reporting uh, was coming through the you know dealt, being dealt with relatively quickly. Um, so we'd gone from a situation where we were performing and getting better 
to going to hitting a wall and going down. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm not being party political about this at all. But my boss at the time was somebody called Keir Starmer, and we went from 2011 on violence women and girls, a subject that I'm very passionate about. We went from being victim rates in our history, one percent you mentioned earlier on. Um, so. What am I? What, what can I? What, what, what do you want me to say? Yeah. Well, uh, well uh, Keir Starmer. Keir Starmer probably thank you for that for that latter bit of the contribution. But I, I, we take you and hear your point, Lara. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I'd be very interested to know from you whether or not. I mean, we can hardly move in Westminster for new commitments from politicians on both sides uh, of the house by way of addressing uh, crime and serious crime. Are there any of them that you find particularly compelling? And is there is there any platform at the moment that you think would make a genuinely meaningful difference to the problems that you're talking about? No. Uh, the talk around sentencing, I mean, they want to, you know, we even have a death, ten, death penalty coming back into the conversation. Sentencing only happens when somebody has been arrested, charged and convicted. If people are not being arrested, people are not making reports in the first place. People are not being arrested. People are not being charged. People are not being prosecuted. People are not being convicted. Sentencing is a complete and utter red herring. That's all you tend to hear. Oh, we're going to make it maximum sentences, blah, 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 blah. Um, the system doesn't have enough people of experience in their roles. So the judges, there are fewer judges. Uh, there are many, many courts around the country that are closed. We lost, it still shocks me, in an eight year period between 2010 and 2018, we lost 800 police stations. Uh, we lost 300 courthouses and court, and never mind the rooms. Um, there are police stations not far from where I live right now, which are pizza restaurants run by organized crime who bought them as badges of honor uh, because, of no, because they knew what they were doing. Now, there was no strategy, none at all. And uh, so everything that's being suggested is sticky, is, uh, you know, you, you're absolutely right. It's a bit of flag waving yeah. to suggest. Okay. The reality, however, is making no difference. Right, Nazir, what we Nazir, need... Nazir, if we were mildly... Uh, feeling a bit down about the state of law and order in the country, and we're now in a state I'll of deep, deep depression. Though, some solutions. There are thousands of police officers with tons of experience who have been retired, who would happily come back to work on serious crime, as we do on cold cases. But you know, bring them back to deal with more serious crime. We have similarly judges, prosecutors, you name it, who are um, doing things. Not me. I'm not coming back ever. Yeah. Uh, doing things yes. um, that would happily come back, yeah. uh, and you you can bring in a quick a quick fix, which would get us back to probably where we were four or five years ago, yeah. and then we'll then we'll then we'll improve. Well. That's